Hello everyone, this is Eunice Leung. So in the previous video, we were discussing regarding momentum, whereby momentum's definition is the product of mass and velocity. So if the mass or the velocity changes, it will actually cause the momentum to change. Momentum's other explanation is also known as the mass in motion or the object in motion. So as long as the object is in motion with a mass, it will have momentum. So in this particular video, we will discuss what happens when a moving object or moving mass hits or collides with another object. So when two objects interact, what actually happens and why? All right. What actually happens is that when two objects is in contact, both objects will interact. And surely, when there's interaction, it will have forces present. Because with that force, the object will change its velocity by changing its magnitude or direction. So when the velocity changes, it will also cause momentum to change. And the change in momentum before and after the collision is what we know as impulse. So let's just say, for example, in this situation, a ball is being moving towards a wall. So the ball is moving with a velocity, hence it has initial momentum. When it interacts with a wall, it will exert a force onto the wall and the wall will exert a force back to the ball. So this particular force will actually cause the ball to change its direction of motion, hence changing its velocity and changing its, its momentum. So before interacting with another object, that is the initial velocity and initial momentum. After interaction, it has a final velocity and also final momentum. So let me clarify one thing. When we talk about interaction of two objects, if we were to focus on one object during the interaction, for example, the car hitting the wall, we focus only on the car, we will have to discuss regarding its impulse and impulsive force. But if we're talking about two cars coming towards each other and colliding or interacting, if we're going to consider both cars, we will have to talk about conservation of momentum, which we are going to discuss in another video named conservation of momentum. So for this particular video, we will focus on one object during the interaction and a discussion on impulse and impulsive force. So what is impulse? Impulse by definition is the change of momentum. When we mention change of momentum, it actually means that the final momentum minus by the initial momentum. And the formula for Im uh, impulse, the symbol for impulse is J. Final momentum is mv, whereby m is mass, v is final velocity, minus initial momentum mu, m is mass, u is initial velocity. And the SI unit for impulse is the same as momentum, whereby it's kg meter per second. Okay, so again over here, where does impulse actually happen? Impulse actually happens here, initial momentum and final momentum. All right, the difference between the final momentum and the initial momentum is what is known as impulse. And please clarify one thing. Impulse is a vector quantity. Momentum is also a vector quantity and velocity is also a vector quantity. So when we mention about vector quantity, it means that it is a quantity that has direction and uh, magnitude. Okay, so in this particular case, always remember when it's pointing towards the right, the sign convention of momentum is positive. But when it is moving towards the left, the sign convention is negative. Or it depends on which is your direction of motion. All right, so always to include the positive and negative sign into your calculation when you're talking about velocity, momentum, and also impulse. So in this particular case, impulse is actually whereby the final momentum minus by the initial momentum. But what actually happens here? All right, what actually happens when the ball is interacting with the wall? So that is actually what we're going to discuss next. Okay, what actually happens at the moment of interaction? At the moment of interaction, when two objects come in contact, each object will exert a force onto the other object. This is actually based on Newton's third law of motion. 
But in order to explain the change in momentum, we will also need to consider the time in contact and also how much magnitude of that reaction force. So, alright, before we actually proceed, there is another explanation on impulse. Impulse is actually when an object experiences a change in momentum. It is caused by a force. A single force that acts on a particle in a very short time interval. It is not a property of the particle. Impulse is not a property of the particle, but a measure of degree to which an external force changes the momentum of the particle. So this is the other explanation of what is impulse. Now, let's consider the time and contact when two objects is in contact and the force that is causing that particular change in momentum. So, in this situation, a girl has a few balls with different materials. She tries to drop the ball onto the floor and notice there's some difference. Alright, we're going to use simulation to change the texture of the ball from soft material to hard material and we're going to observe what happens to the time of contact. And also, what is the force, the reaction force that is by the floor onto the ball? So let's go to the simulation. Now, this particular simulation is actually from Java Lab, all right, created by Dong Jun here, as you can see. So in this particular case, let me change my highlighter. Okay. Now, in the first picture, you will see the girl dropping the ball from the same height. And this second picture is actually where we have the ball interacting with the floor. And the third part here is the graph of the force exerted by the floor onto the ball and the time of contact between the two objects. So we're going to change the material of the ball by sliding this from soft to hard. And we're going to press start. Okay. So for the soft material, I click start, the ball is being slowly dropped onto the floor and we're going to see how does the, the ball interact with the floor at here, right? It interacts and bounces back up, okay? So during this particular interaction, you will notice that the ball is actually quite flattened out because the material is soft, okay? So when the material is soft, the time of contact between the ball and the floor is quite long, as long as 0.3 seconds. And the force that is exerted by the floor onto the ball is only a mere 10 newton. Okay, so what happens if we change the material of the ball towards a harder material? And let's start the simulation once again. So over here, the ball is uh, being dropped down, and we're going to see how does it interact with the floor. And it bounces back up. Right, from this particular uh, picture, you can see that when the ball interacted with the floor, the deformation is actually less, making the time of contact between the ball and the floor to be much lesser. In this case, it's around 0.8 seconds, and the force that is exerted is quite high, 35 newton here. All right, so this is actually what happens. In another words to say, when the material of the ball is soft, Okay, let me open up my pointer again. When the material of the ball is soft, the time of contact is long, all right, 0.3 seconds, and the force that is exerted is actually less, much more lower. But when the material of the ball is hard, all right, the deformation is less, causing the time of contact to be short, and the force exerted onto the ball is much more. In another words to say, the shorter time of contact, the more the impulsive force. So, what is impulsive force? The force that is actually exerted by the floor onto the ball is also known as impulsive force. But before we define impulsive force, there's a few things that we need to clarify. First is the assumption. Now, previous uh, video regarding Newton's third law, there is a, when we're talking about forces, there is actually a pair of interacting forces that acts on different objects or different particles. So impulsive force is actually one of the interacting forces exerted by a particle. And that particular impulsive force acts in a short time, but much greater magnitude compared to the other forces present. So let's into the consideration of the ball being dropped onto the floor again. So 
Identifying the forces that is acting on the ball, the ball exerts a gravitational force onto the floor, also known as the weight, while the floor exerts a force onto the ball, and it is also known as the normal reaction force. So when the ball is dropped from a certain height, it will bounce back up due to impulsive force when hitting the floor. As a short time of contact between the ball and the floor is very, very short, the average force exerted by the floor onto the ball is much greater than the gravitational force. So in this particular case, impulsive force is the force exerted by the floor onto the ball. And when we calculate impulsive force, we ignore the gravitational force as the, the force exerted by the floor onto the ball is much, much greater than the gravitational force during the interaction. So now to the definition of impulsive force. Impulsive force is the rate of change of momentum in a collision or impact. So F stands for impulsive force is mv minus mu, which is the change of momentum. You divided it by time. So F impact is mv minus mu over t. The SI unit for impulsive force is Newton, or the base unit is kg meter per second square. Now, if we were to rearrange the impulsive force equation, F equals to mv minus mu over t, we factorize out the mass, we will get v minus u over t, and this particular formula, v minus u over t, is also known, uh, the formula for acceleration. So I substitute acceleration instead of v minus u over t, I get impulsive force equals to ma. And it's the same formula, similar formula with Newton's second law of motion, F net equals to ma. So that's the reason why Newton's second law of motion has another definition, which is the rate of change of momentum is directly proportionate to the force. And this particular definition was used by Newton when he first postulated Newton's second law of motion. So what affects impulsive force? First, mass. Impulsive force is directly proportionate to the mass of the object. The higher the mass, the higher the uh, momentum, the more the change of momentum and therefore the impulsive force will be higher. The second thing that affects impulsive force is the time of impact. Time of impact, collision time, time of uh, interaction is the similar thing. So, impulsive force is inversely proportionate to the time of impact. How do I know? Because it's in the formula. F impulse equals to mv minus mu over t. So, the impulsive force is inversely proportionate to the time of impact. The shorter the time of impact, the more the impulsive force. So, how do we change the time of impact? We lengthen the time of impact by using materials that can lengthen the time. For example, an airbag in a car. The airbag will actually increase the time of impact between the passenger or the driver and the steering wheel. So it actually helps to prevent injuries. Or in a high jump spot, normally at a high jump, we will actually put a, a thick, huge mattress and it's soft bit at the landing side of the high jump. Why? Because we want to lengthen the time of impact between humans and the floor. Alright, by lengthening the time, we are reducing the impulsive force. Or in this particular case, in the long jump. Long jump athletes always land on a pit filled with loose sand. The reason the loose sand is used is so that the athletes, when they jump onto the pit of sand, the sand will actually increase the time of impact, reducing the impulsive force, thus reducing the chances of getting injuries. Now, the third thing that affects impulsive force is to change the momentum. How do we change the momentum? From the formula of momentum P equals to mv, we discuss regarding mass. So in order to change the momentum, we have to change the velocity, all right, before and after it is moving. There's another way of changing the velocity that is by changing the height of the object being dropped from different position. The higher the object is being dropped, the fast, the more the velocity before colliding. How does this happen? Refer back to your linear motion equation. Now, 
There are two situations of using impulsive force. The first is to reduce impulsive force in sports. So as you can see, thick mattresses with soft surface are used in events such as high jump so that the time interval of the impact, let me change to a highlighter, okay, time interval of impact of the landing is extended, therefore reducing the impulsive force. This can prevent injuries of the participants. Goalkeepers in uh, football or soccer will always wear gloves, thick gloves. This is actually to increase the collision time between the ball and the hand. And this will reduce the impulsive force that is actually felt by the goalkeepers. Or another example is when a gymnast performs a squat vault. She will bend her legs upon landing. This is to increase the time of impact and reducing the impulsive force acting on her legs, okay? And hence, this will reduce the chances of getting serious injuries. Another example is whereby a baseball player will catch the ball in the direction of motion of the ball. So when his hand moves backwards the same direction as the incoming ball's motion, it actually prolongs the time for the change in momentum and then it will actually reduce the impulsive force felt by the baseball player. So next is actually to increase the impulsive force. Now, the benefits of increasing the impulsive force is whereby karate experts break a thick wooden slab with the bare hands by moving at a very fast speed. When moving at a very fast speed, the short time of impact actually causes a large impulsive force onto the wooden slab and causing it to break. Another explanation for uh, increasing impulsive force is actually a massive hammer, a heavy hammer being used moving at a fast speed and brought to rest upon hitting the nail. So the large change in momentum because moving at a fast speed and brought to a rest in a short time interval actually causes a large impulsive force to happen, which causes the nail to be driven into the wood. Another example is a football must have enough air pressure, all right, so that the contact time is short. When the contact time is short, the impulsive force acting on the ball will be bigger and allowing the ball to move faster and further. Lastly, a pestle and mortar, mortar sorry, are made of stones, all right, which means it is a hot surface. When a pestle is used to pound chilies, the hard surface of both pestle and mortar causes the pestle to stop in a very short time. A large impulsive force is resulted and thus causes these spices to be crushed easily. So that is actually the explanation for impulse and impulsive force. I hope you have learned and understand what is impulse and how do we modify impulsive force. There's another video that actually shows on how to solve problems regarding impulse and impulsive force that you can watch in the, uh, in the link below, all right? Or you can find it in my playlist. So once again, uh, that's the end of the video. So if you like my video, remember to click like, hit the subscribe and the notification button. Till the next video, bye everyone!